Human being smart, we have this amazing brain capable of identifying relevant information from a given textual um, data. Let's say you want to identify which part of a text is um, a verb, an adverb, an adjective, and even which section is a person, an organization, and a location. So how can we teach machines to perform the same tasks? In this tutorial, I'll provide you with five techniques that are mainly used by um, engineers, researchers to teach machines um, to perform those tasks. So to successfully perform these tasks, we'll need three main modules, NLTK, Spacey, and Scikit-Learn, which can be all installed using uh, the pip um, package manager. So run these three commands, pip install, nltk, spacey, and scikit-learn. And right after that, we have to import on um, those modules using the import statements. And then download um, punkt, which is required by nltk to perform um, some of the text pre-processing tasks. And the data set that we'll be using is the built-in data set from um, scikit-learn, the 20 news crop data sets. And let's run this section. Running this section, like what I've put here on um, the dash QQQ is used mainly to avoid showing the logs when installing um, the packages and run this section as well to import the relevant modules and also um, use the uh, scikit-learn native data sets. And the next step is to load the data. So the data is shown in the news.data attribute where we can get the data sets. And let's have a look at the number of data set that we have. As you can see, we have a lot of data sets in this section. So just show the first one. In this first section of the data, we have a bunch of information. So we'll be using only this section of the data for simplicity's sake. Um, so the first pre-processing task that we'll be using is tokenization. So tokenization is a process of splitting on the data set into different tokens. So by token, we can use the word token, sentence token. So initializing this um, variable first article with this section of the text, we can first perform the uh, word tokenization using the word tokenize function of NLTK and also the sentence tokenization using the sentence tokenize of the same library. So running this, so okay, we have to run this section first to load the modules and also this part to perform those tasks. And let's print the word tokens. So as you can see, the word token splits with the original text into words. And from the original one to the tokens, we can see I am sure some and so on. And for the sentence token, we have I am sure um, measures like let's try to run the print statement to efficiently print those sentences. So as you can see here, we have I'm sure some bashers and so on to devils we have a dot sign here and right after that it starts with actually to relieve and then however to pens so this means that the sentence tokenizer um tokenize sentence using the dot sign so every time it meets the dot sign it breaks it and consider the next one as a new sentence and yeah, these are the two tokenization techniques that I wanted to cover in this section for the tokenization. So right after the tokenization, there is a new, another technique called stop word removal. If we get back to the text, like information as I, um, of, are, the, of, of and so on. These information are not going to provide, you know, any additional um, added value when it comes to capturing the whole essence of the text. So it might be kind of good to remove those information because those information are called stop words. So they do not bring any additional information to 
understanding the context of a given text. So the stop word removal is the section, is the technique used to do that. So what you can do is to import stop words from NLTK. And since we are dealing with English text, we use the stop words for using the English language. Okay, so this variable is you going to use that stop word. And what do we do now? Since we have a stop word and the original tokens, we filter through the original token and try to get rid of stop words. So this is what is done in this section. So from the original text, original tokens to the final one, we can see that some information like thereof are removed from the final tokens. We still have I, sure, bachelor, a bashers, pens, but we're not seeing the their information anymore. But still, we do have some other information that are not quite important anymore. You know, we have the punctuations like the dots, the exclamation marks, the commas. We have to remove those as well. So this is where we can use the techniques of removing those punctuations. So we can use the native string module in um, in Python to do that. So just list again and filter using on the original, I mean the non-stop words that we have used in the previous section to remove those um, those punctuations. And running this section, we can also see that from here as well, let me show you that for this comma is not there anymore after actually. We have actually, initially we had actually and comma, and now we have actually and the comma disappeared. And also all the, the um, dots, everything disappeared. So this is where we can um, take benefits of removing the punctuations. So just use the string dot punctuations, which is going to grab all the punctuations from our string data and then we we'll remove even the exclamation marks that we have removed as well. So limitization and stemming are two different techniques that are used to bring um, words into the root format. So let's say that we have this information, textual information thing. This thing really confuses. Let's say in that in a given text you have confused, confusing, and confused, confuses. These words are mainly the same, but if they are used in um, different format, like I stated before, they might increase the size of a text, you know. So the goal of lemmatization and stemming is to kind of bring all those words into their root format. So if we have confusing, confused, and confused, confuses, all those can be um, reduced to one word, which is confused, you know, in order to reduce the scope of the text. So um, to use stemming and limitization, we can um, we can use two modules from the NLTK library. We have word net limitizer and porter stemmer. So these two modules can be used to analyze those to perform those processing. And to do that, I have um, implemented the two helper functions, stem words and limitize words. And all those two functions will be applied to the sample of text. And running this section, it's going to download um, to the WordNet, uh, which is a pre-trained module for performing um, mainly the limitization section in the limitization section. And let's run the stem words function. So this, as you can see, we have this kind of reduced to THI and thing reduced to thing, really, really, and so on. So it's trying to um, bring those words into their roots. So this is the stemming. And let's have a look at, oh, before even moving forward, like, we have thing, which is reduced to thing, and things here reduced as well to thing. So the plural is reduced to singular. So this is going to 
reduce um like bring two words into one let's have a look at lemmatization so running the lemmatization we have long kind of the same process so like we cannot see the difference um between lemmatization and stemming by just running on an example on a simple sample of text to really capture um, the difference you can um, run multiple process multiple experimentation and identify which one is best for your use case and when we have that let's move to the last one which is part of speech tagging the part of speech tagging is used to identify in the given text which one is the verb an adverb a noun an adjective and so on so this can be used by um importing the analtiga.tag post tagging function and before doing that we download the average perceptron tagger which is the model um the underlying model on uh, used by NLTK to perform this task and once we have that what we have to do is um, let's just say that we are running this on the without punctuation on token. So running the post tag, now we can um, print the tags. So as you can see here, we have the I is identified as pronoun, sure is identified as verb, bashers is identified as plurals of nouns, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much for watching this video. As usual, if there are some um, other things that you want me to cover in my next video, feel free to comment below. I'll be um, happy to um, provide my guidance in covering those, those concepts. Thank you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share, and follow. Bye-bye.